Hey guys, it's John here from John's DIY Playground. Today we're going to take one of these Nintendo Wii Fit balance boards and modify it uh, using a, t a hack out there that's already been published. But we're going to tweak it a little bit further and use our Raspberry Pi to power this board instead of using the batteries. The batteries must be removed for this hack to work right. Otherwise you could set your house on fire or worse. So please get the batteries out and let's get started. Here's an illustration I created to show how this system's going to work for our smart beer fridge. Start with a small compact fridge. Um, it can be up to 330 pounds maximum, including the beer and fridge together, the weight. Uh, that's the maximum rating of the Wii Fit balance board. Again, take the batteries out of the Wii balance board because we're going to be feeding it power directly from our Raspberry Pi. We need to run four wires out of the um, balance board to our for this read relay that's going to manually trigger the sync button for us I should say automatic by control of Raspberry Pi and two more wires one is going to be a 5 volt and the other a ground wire to power the Wii Fit board. Um, GPIOs which are the general purpose input output pins um, pay attention to which version of the Raspberry Pi you are using this case we have a Raspberry Pi model B um, so I will show you the pinout diagram for that, but specifically we're going to use two GPIO pins. There's going to be the GPIO 17, which is also known as P0, um, that's going to run to our door switch. We put the door switch on here so we can detect with this magnetic switch if the door is open or closed. The other GPIO runs to the relay, so that will either close or open the relay, which it acts like it's hitting the sync button for us. The other things you'll need are a Bluetooth dongle and that will talk by Bluetooth to the Wii Fit board and get the weight data from it. And then you'll be have to plug into the internet here. You can either use a Wi-Fi dongle also on the USB or plug into the Ethernet port directly and that will stream the data to a website called initialstate.com where we'll show and display our results. To remove the bottom cover, it's going to take a medium head uh, size Phillips screwdriver and there's a total of 24 screws total that need to be removed on this thing. So in each corner you've got three screws, so get those undone and then go up the middle, up here and here and here there's more screws. And then be sure again, get your batteries out, two more screws under the battery cover. We need to get those off too temporarily. So. Once you have that done, you can just start disassembling first the um, hubs or the feet, those corners. There also might be the bumpers that uh, come off with it or fall off or stay on. It's uh, Just keep track of those. Those are just for show. And then when you have the side pieces off, then you can remove the bottom cover like so. And then you've got your battery cover. So let me show you that. I'm sorry, the battery holder. Um, you just lift that up and off like so. And underneath there is the circuit board we'll be working on. So uh, there's no screws on there. They're just kind of indexed into a little piece of plastic. We're going to have to get a soldering iron out and we're going to solder on to some of these points and make our hack there. Now to run our connector wires into the Wii Fit board, we're going to have to drill a hole in the bottom. And I'm going to use a computer connector like this one from a hard drive. You can use any kind of four pin connector as long as it's handed. In other words, it can't be reversed, so it can only go one way. Uh, that'll have the power wires and the two wires that are needed for the uh, control of the read relay, which is going to hit the sync button for us. So um, I thought about putting the connector through the hole where you see the X mark, um, but you have to consider what's underneath in the uh, board and see this metal frame here could possibly be a really tough spot to uh, fish the wires. You don't want them near that metal edge too close either. So what I decided in looking at this is that I'm going to take my quarter inch drill bit and punch a hole right up around here just above the battery cover so that when I drill um, we're coming into this area with the wires and that will give us enough uh, room to fish under here to our circuit board where we'll be soldering. So just go ahead and take your quarter inch drill bit, punch a quick hole, and you're all set. Ready to move to the next step. As I mentioned earlier, you can use any kind of four pin connector if you wish or just wire directly even if you want into your Wii balance board. But for my uh, particular situation, my quick connect that runs into the Wii balance board is going to have the following type of setup where pin one 
located here on the connector is yellow it's going to be my sync button one of the two wires that goes to it number two will also be used for the sync button the number three wire will be our ground and that will be soldered onto the battery pack ground side and pin four is the red or five volt supply that's going to come in and be soldered onto the battery plus side of the uh, connector there so let's show that next so on the underside of the battery connector on the Wii balance board, you can see I've got the circuit board here. The switch is the sync switch here is the underside here. So pin number one, my yellow wire, is on one side of the switch. The black pin number two is on the other side here. And then for the ground for the system, that's uh, my pin number three on my quick connector and that's soldered on over here. And then pin number four, the red wire, that's the 5 volt supply power that's soldered on right there. Now when I put this board back together it'll be just like as if it wasn't taken apart other than I might have to hog out a little bit of plastic to get the wires to route properly under the board but um, other than that I'm just gonna get this thing buttoned up. Here's the bottom of our Wii Fit board all buttoned up now and I've got my meter on the two connection points for the sync switch that are assigned to the first two pins there and you can see it works the right way because when I hit this switch I get the beep that means we have continuity and everything is good so we're ready to go and start talking about the software on the software side of things I'm going to put a link on my page below this video to this URL which gives you all the detail you need for setting up the Raspberry Pi um, keep in mind one deviation I did make to this is that I changed the code so that we can have that relay uh, trigger the sync button automatically and then uh, so you want to use that code instead of the code that's called out here for that particular um, part of the demo. Uh, I will post that on the GitHub site also linked in my video below so check that out. Um, as a re um, Just for you guys to know this guy who wrote this for Make Scene, this is Jamie Bailey um, he's actually the CEO of Initial State, which is uh, the site that we're sending our data to for posting and displaying it, which I'll show later. This is the pinout diagram for the Raspberry Pi Model B. And again, you can use any Raspberry Pi for this hack. Um, I'm just using one of the cheapest and oldest versions that will just be dedicated for this task. Um, and we're going to use, in this case, as I mentioned, GPIO 17, which is a P0 pin here on the GPIO and then the GPIO number 18 which is also called P1 uh, that will be for our relay and then we also need to grab one of the 5 volt pins for powering the board and the one of the ground pins and that's all we need for GPIO just to give you guys an idea of how I have my hardware hooked up um, this is the side wall of my uh, next to my bar fridge um, this is actually a vertical wall, so I have this stuff uh, mounted to the wall. Half of a Raspberry Pi case is screwed to the wall here, and then it's snapped in. And then I'm using two-sided Velcro with adhesive behind this breadboard. Um, these breakouts are really cool for the GPIOs because then it makes it real breadboard friendly. Um, you can find those online on eBay or Amazon. And then for the wires that are hanging down after I pushed them in, I kind of wrapped a little bit of this uh, Sugru stuff. Um, it's like a moldable rubbery compound it it, uh, it cures in about 24 hours but that's something just kind of for like strain relief and keep the wires since they are hanging down from uh, pulling out of my breadboard so that was the solution I used in this case okay guys you can see I've got the Python um, I'm sorry the um, putty console pulled up here and I'm gonna run the Python script for the beer fridge um, you just put sudo python beer fridge dot underscore make dot py like I have shown. Hit enter and with my modified script it's actually going to force that relay pin to be triggered and synchronize with the, the balance board. So you can see it doing that now. I'm trying to connect it connected. Okay so it has basically the connection It's ready to start writing data and when it writes it'll write up to this initialstate.com website. So with that, we have the fridge loaded with 13 beers, and it can show status when something is removed, the overall status and the door status. Um, I'm not finding that the door status really op um, refreshes that quickly, but um, let's see if we catch it this time. So I'm in a different room from the fridge, but uh, I've got a DIY playground volunteer uh, ready to help us. So please, um, sexy bartender, please remove two beers from the fridge. 
Okay, there you see the door is open. And you can see status down in the PuTTY screen also that the door closed and there it is on the initial state website. Starts the measurement, it's taking 1500 measurements actually and averaging them out. So it takes a little bit of time for it to do that. And then it'll come back with its answer. So you can see now it thinks there's 12 in the, um, in the fridge, so the measurement is complete. Um, you can wait and shortly you'll see this number change to 12. Um, there it is there. And our status in this case um, still stays to thumbs up. So in this case, sexy bartender, please remove two more beers from the fridge. You see the door opened again. She must be finding a couple of beers. Oh, there we go. The door closed, starting the measurement. You can set thresholds in the config file that allow it to show the different statuses depending on how many beers are left, which could actually trigger like an alert, like an email or something like that. It doesn't do that now, but you could modify the Python script to do so. So now you can see we're down to seven bottles and it's got a sad face because we're in a, a state of shock here. We're almost out of beers. So finally, let's see what happens uh, worst case when we take most of them out. So sexy bartender, please remove a large quantity of beers. And so there's the door open. And doors closed and measuring once again. Should just take another couple seconds. And finally, let's see what we get. 64. It's saying we've got a number of bottles. So we're all the way down to two now. So it's going to update the initial state website with two. And now look at the status. It's crazy. All right. Thank you so much, Sexy Bartender, for your help. Okay, guys, well, that's going to do it for today. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe for future videos. Uh, in the meantime, I am going to continue extensive cover, um, testing of this system. Right here, I've got uh, the official uh, IPA beer of John's DIY Playground, at least for this weekend. It's from Founders out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's a lovely beer. Give it a shot. Highly recommended. So thanks for watching. And again, this is John for John's DIY Playground. Cheers.